All right, so now we're going to talk about radiocarbon dating. We kind of talked about the isotopes uh, a couple seconds ago, but you can see here if a saber-toothed cat, and does anybody know actually, so saber-toothed cat, believe it or not, is extinct. It's extinct. They existed at the same time as humans. Does anybody know how they died? If you guessed human hunting, you were correct, all right? We actually hunted out saber-toothed cat because, you know, back then, first off, saber-toothed cat was not a great predator. We found out that what it did, it was an ice age basically developed for the ice age. It was, you know, it was genetically altered during the ice age because that was what was great. Uh, those big tusks were really good for stabbing these very large, thick-skinned animals like mammoths. So they could jump and they could stab them and kill them. But after the Ice Age ended, the saber-toothed tiger really had a hard time adapting to its new environment. Plus, people liked to hunt the saber-toothed tiger. First off, its bite strength was terrible, so they weren't really all that afraid of it. And because it had its really weak bite. It kind of stabbed with those things, but that's all it could really do. And People, of course, when you hunted them, you took trophies. And of course, they broke off those teeth and they became cool necklaces to show how awesome of a hunter you were. So you wore this like saber tooth cat necklace. You were like, yeah, and me, I'm the best hunter of all time. Eight saber tooth tiger tooth fangs right here. So that was what the saber tooth happened to saber tooth tiger. So now we have to like date when they die. So we know that they were around during human existence because we can radiocarbon date them. So you can see it's something called carbon-14. So they say, okay, they know that in, you know, when it died 17,000 years ago or so, that it had all of its carbon-14. 50% happened in 5,000 years later, they know you're going to drop down to half at 11,000 years, we know we've dropped down 25% of that carbon. And at 17,000 years, we know that you're down to 12.5% of that carbon. So that's how they, they kind of figured out. They know if you only have, if you're, you have, they find a carbon-14 atom on this bone that they, they, they only have two of them, they know that that saber-toothed tiger is 17,000 years old. So. What did the archaeologists and anthropologists look for? They looked for artifacts, anything made by humans. They looked for evidence, you know. They looked for evidence. Where, where did they find the stuff? Where was it at? Was it in Africa? Was it in Asia? All right? Where did they start on Earth? And the answer to that question is most anthropologists believe that humans, the first humans started in East Africa about 4.5 million years ago. The first people to kind of walk upright and use tools. All right. So once we realized that, and this is a theory, now granted this has not necessarily ever been proven true because we can't really go back in time and figure it out, but everything we know at this point, all the skeletons and all the remains that we have found, the oldest ones have all been found in Africa. So. At some point, we kind of figured that out, and Africa became the main exploration point for human remains. So we discovered one that was 1.75 million years old. And we call him Homo habilis, which means he could use tools. We knew he had, you know, he, was, uh, he walked upright, he used tools, they were smarter. All right? So that's kind of what they did to start off the the exploration, because we knew that was the oldest one we'd ever found. And eventually, we find a skeleton we refer to as Lucy. And Lucy, and a lot of these early human remains were not as tall as you and me. If you don't know this already, I'll tell you now, the tallest people to ever walk this planet are sitting in this room. Americans today are the tallest people to ever exist. We average now, the average male is over 5'10". The average male in the Middle Ages was 5'3". So that's only 500 years ago. So 
The Lucy was only three and a half feet tall. So, you know, yay big. Size of your average first grader, second grader. All right? And we found 40% of her skeleton. We know, and you can kind of see here next to the little girl, that Lucy walked upright. Probably, maybe that maybe didn't use tools, we're not sure. We found the skeleton that shows that this, this creature walked upright. We all know that most other primates do not. They use their arms as part of their movement. Gorillas, orangutans, chimpanzees, they all use their arms. These creatures did not. So they believe that they are related to humans. Oldest found was Artie. And again, Artie, not real tall. About three foot tall. 4.4 million years old. So, so most scientists have concluded that humankind began in East Africa four and a half million years ago. By the way, you can see, they believed he was furry. So the early humans, what did we do? Early humans like you and I, Homo sapien, Homo habilis, they were hunter-gatherers. Now they believed Homo sapien, the, what we are, originated around 70 to 80,000 years ago. And that they hunted and gathered for their food. Now first off, who hunted and gathered? What did the men do? What did the women do? If you guessed that the women gathered and the men hunted, you were correct. Now, another question. Who produced the most food for their community? Was it the men or the women? If you guessed the women, you were correct. The women produced more food. Why? The men hunted. Now, are you always successful when you go out on a hunt? You are not. You are not always successful when you go hunting. So a lot of times the men would go off, first off, if you ever watched a, a lion tribe, uh, you know, a lion pride, sorry, not tribe, pride video, you've seen the men don't do a whole lot. They're like, yeah, I'm gonna go hunting. Rawr, they go off, and then they take a nap under a tree for seven hours. And then pretty soon the women get hungry and they go off and kill stuff. But meanwhile, all the men are laying under a tree. And then the lion gets up and he's like, Rawr, the food is here. Walk over, kick the kids out of the way, eat, argh, big tough lion, goes and lays down on a tree and takes a nap. I think that a lot of the ancient men would go off like, all right, we're going hunting. And then they would go off and just wait for the women to gather berries and nuts and stuff. And they'd come back and be like, yes, can't wait to eat. It's so good. I'm sorry, we're very successful hunting today, ladies. Uh, yeah, I just got away. But women were more successful at picking berries and nuts and seeds every single day than the men were at hunting. So when they did hunt, they got a lot of the tools, they got a lot of their clothing, and they got a lot of meat, but that meat didn't stay good for very long. So you could only eat it as long as that meat was preserved. All right? So that's kind of how it started off, the hunting and gathering. And so they would hunt an area out of food, and then they would pick all the berries and eat all the nuts, and then they would move on. So they would require a lot of land in order to keep themselves fed.